Hey everybody, Woody here, maintenance manager with Ventera at 4123 Cedar Springs. We had an evaporator fan motor go out, um, so we swapped out the whole motor assembly, uh, brought it down here to the shop, and I thought this would be a really good opportunity for me to show you guys how to replace the fan motor. So we have our assembly here. Um, this is a first co unit. Uh, I know some of you have like closet units, which are only going to have half of this. You're going to have your squirrel cage and your motor. Uh, we have uh, double squirrel cages and uh, our motors in the middle. This again is a first co. Uh, you have all kinds of different brands. Uh, this is just for uh, for the the squirrel cage and the motor assembly that has the motor with the squirrel cages on the side. Uh, so what I've gone ahead and done is um, I've loosened up the squirrel cages on the inside here. Uh, mine are a 532nd Allen wrench. The T handle's the best to use. You've got uh, two holes here at the top. Uh, you put your T handle down inside and line it up with the Allen, uh, the, the set screw that's inside holding your squirrel cage in. Uh, these are on the inside, just like this. So you're gonna take your T handle, stick it through there and line it up with the, the retaining nut. You're gonna loosen those and loosen those up and uh, take those and pull them out the sides. So here we have one squirrel cage and here we have the other. Sometimes they can be a little stubborn coming out. Um, if so, uh, if you get one out, grab the shaft uh, through the middle of it and just kind of rotate it and it'll pull out the other side. Uh, for me, my best practice that I've found is to go ahead and take one of these sides off. Uh, so I've gone ahead and already removed the screws and I want to pull this out and set it aside because you have to get your fan motor out one way or the other. Um, and it's just easier if you do it now. Also on the sides, you have, um, you have your caps that go on the ends of your unit. Uh, as you can see, this one has two little marks on it. Uh, and I have two marks on here. This lets me know that the two marks are on the, the right side and which way it goes, because these are not unidirectional. They have to go back in the same way they came out. So I take a Sharpie and I mark two marks on one side and on the other side, on this one, as you can see, I have one and one and then one and one. Whenever we go back and put it back together, it lines up. Sorry, when it goes back together, they'll line up. So anyways, back to the motor. So we have, we have one side taken off. So now what we're gonna do is these clips are what hold this motor, or what hold the motor in. Let's go ahead and take and unpop those. And if you'll notice, they, uh, they have a little bit of an angle more on one side than the other. So pay attention how this comes off because you're gonna need to put these back the way they came off. So we're gonna take, gonna pop those off. We're gonna take our old motor, remove it from our assembly, set it aside. Then we're gonna get our new motor. And always pay attention. Um, on the motor, there is a rotational directional arrow. Make sure that you put that rotational directional arrow the same direction that you take it off because if you put it on backwards, it will mount up, but it won't blow air out like it's supposed to. It's going to, uh, it's gonna suck air in through the side or it's gonna suck air in through your vents and blow it out your return. And that's not what you want. You wanna be able to pull it in through the return and blow it out your vents. So always make sure that you have your directional arrow facing the correct way. Pay attention to whenever you uh, take it apart and whenever you put it back together. Also, Make sure that you have the right RPM on your motor because I know sometimes that you have a little, uh, little variance between one or the other. So always make sure that you put your directional arrow the right way. So this one says that the rotation is rotating this way so the motor is gonna spin this way. If you look at our squirrel cages, they have a certain kind of shape to them and you'll know that the air is gonna blow out the holes. So whenever you put this in, it's gonna rotate this way, so we're gonna put it back in. Our directional arrow is facing the right way. You're gonna make sure that that seat's down in there the way, 
just like so. We're gonna take our clips, gonna take the clip, Put it back on top of there. Take your flathead screwdriver. Clip your flathead screwdriver back on there just like that. That one's going to go back on there just like that. So now that you have your fan motor in, you're going to take and install your squirrel cages. Again, your squirrel cages are not multi-directional. You're going to pay attention to how they come out. The cups blow the air, so you're gonna to wanna to put that to where the air cups, put that on the shaft. Now, don't tighten that up and on the shaft until you get it all assembled back together, because if you tighten it up now and you go to put your end caps on, you might have some rubbing on there. So pay close attention to that. So we're gonna take and just put it all back together the same way you took it apart. It all should go back together fairly easy. So there it go. That goes in there, and then we'll take the screws. They go in the same way that you took them out. Uh, for time's sake, I won't put this all back together for you. Um, but just again, make sure that you get your squirrel cages in. You make sure that you always mark your fairings so that whenever you take them off, when you put them back on, that they line up and that they do not rub that it doesn't, as you rotate the motor, that it doesn't hit or catch on something. Very important to do. So after you get your motor assembly put back together and it spins freely, you have a spare fur down fan motor assembly waiting to be used. So thank you guys very much. And always remember, be safe.